if you're like me, you're just now getting back into riding after the winter. I, I think I rode twice all winter, so I'm very out of shape. Um, these are some exercises you can do. Um, in this video, my brother is lunging my horse Jackson. Uh, but you can do this without someone lunging it, but it's a lot easier. If you can get someone to help you, you only need to do it a few times to get the benefit. One of the big benefits is with being lunged is that you don't have to worry where your hands are. You can um, practice not using your hands to balance. Now, this is <clears throat> briefly, this is Jackson. He's my quarter horse. His trot is not smooth and comfortable, so you really have to practice riding when you sit that trot. But the thing is, these exercises, the lifting the legs and holding your arms out, is to help you sit in the correct spot, which is sit kind of on your seat bones. Um, you're not supposed to be sitting too far forward on your crotch and you're not supposed to be leaning too far back. Um, if I look at my riding over the last few months, the little bit that I did, I can definitely tell that yes, I'm out of shape and I'm you know collapsing and all kinds of bad things. So these are exercises that I did early on to get where I'm at and I didn't have anybody teaching me. I just had my brother lunging me and I would do these exercises um, and initially I did them in an, in an English saddle that was a smooth leather, man, you'd slide around so well. <laughs> you'd just slide right off if you weren't careful. So you'd see me grabbing my saddle a lot. As you're doing these exercises, please feel free to grab onto the saddle so you don't fall off. This is not supposed to make you fall off the saddle, um, but instead to learn to balance and not be able to have to hold on. Now, I've been riding for a while, so it doesn't matter what level rider you are, you want to be able to do these exercises. And if you can't lift your leg as high as I can, don't worry about it. Still, that practice, you're gonna find you have a really hard time at the beginning because the balance isn't there. But even if you just do this a little bit and can only get the exercises down partway, it's gonna help you so much. Um, so along with that, I have a video, a DVD, uh, you can get on my website, you'll find the link below, on how to be a better rider. It includes seven, I think seven exercises that you can do on your own. You don't have to have anybody lunging you and that are exercises that helped me become a better rider. And I'm finding that I need to work on them myself right now because I'm getting a little bit lazy. Okay, so here I'm gonna hop up on Jackson. Uh, my brother, Ryan, who's never lunged a horse in his life, is going to lunge Jackson. Now Jackson is my main guy, he's my quarter horse. Um, we haven't done much lunging or these exercises in a while. Um, so uh, one thing you'll notice is that Jackson does not have a halter on or a bridle. He's being lunged um, with what I call a cordeo or neck rope. Um, he's pretty well trained to do that. So just be aware that that's what it is. Okay, so um, I'm just going to show you briefly. These exercises are very simple in the idea. Um, one exercise... Uh, other than having your arms out, is to lift one leg and then the other, left leg and then right leg. And initially, since I'm not very flexible or balanced, I'm leaning a bit too far back. Um, I want to be able to sit upright and lift my legs. Um, and then you also want to lift both legs at the same time. And then ideally hold them up a little bit as you balance on your seat bones. Um, so by by lifting your legs this way, especially when you lift both of them at the same time, it tends to rock you back a little bit to put you on your seat bones, and then you want to be able to sit upright from there. Um, and it sounds kind of difficult, and it, and it kind of is. Learning to ride is not easy. Um, so we're going to do some lunging. Uh, I would encourage you to start at the walk. Um, and once you get comfortable, then move to the trot. Uh, again, once again, Jackson's trot is not super easy. Um, so um, that's just one of the things that I've had to learn when doing this is that he is not has the mo he doesn't have the most comfortable trot. He has a big trot because we've done dressage. So at the walk, um, feel free to grab the saddle front and back if you need to. But at the walk, um, make sure you have your arms out. Do little circles with your arms if you need to, uh, and then start doing the leg exercises. So um, I'm the one keeping Jackson going. And lifting alternating legs, left leg, right leg. And then I'm also trying to lift my legs up, balance on my seat bones. Um, and I'm not trying to grip with my thighs here. That's, I'm not trying to grip. I'm just trying to lift and then balance on my seat bone. 
fairly easy to do at the walk, much harder to do at the faster speeds. Um, and again, feel free to grab this front of the saddle as you need to. Um, here we go. Just doing some trotting. Doing individual legs. Jackson feels me get off balance, which I am. And he slowed down. So ideally, I should be more upright. That's going to come with um, doing this a few days in a row. So I have the balance. And then also the muscle control to bring my body where it needs to be. Um, now, as you put your legs down after you do this, um, make sure you are relaxing back into the saddle so that your legs hang underneath you and not, uh, basically so they're not really far forward, which has a tendency to happen. Uh, we had a battery, our battery died there, and so we had to go get another battery and then continue. So again, I'm leaning too far back, um, which I will hopefully correct the next time I do this exercise. You can see me lifting alternating legs there, and then I'll go ahead and speed up and do some trotting. Again, feel free to grab the saddle if you need to, but the goal is to do this without holding on to the saddle. Um, again, alternating legs. And ideally, I should be able to do this and hold this a little bit more. Uh, basically, lift my legs up and hold it um, like there, but I can feel I'm, I lost my balance there. Um, and Jackson can feel that, and he'll slow down. So I'm out of shape, and I can, I mean, even just looking at this, I'm like, oh, i got a little ways to go before I'm back to where I was before. I'm very relaxed in the saddle, but I'm not sitting or riding very well. Um, but that's okay. I want you to see that the beginning of the riding season, this is what it looks like, um, and that you can move past that. And, you know, if you lunge when you have your dog, you know, the dog ends up getting lunge and gets exercise too. So that's a benefit. So we're going to go ahead and change directions here. Um, and ideally, you'll have a horse that would be fairly consistent um, in his trot. Uh, and Jackson, again, usually has done this before, but it's been a little, been actually a few years since we've done these exercises. There's the trot, lifting my legs. Again, a lot of this is about balance. Um, my riding DVD is less about balance and a little bit more about body position although it includes balance as well. And there, Jackson's trot got really big, and it is much harder to sit. Um, but uh, when I did these before, he would have this big trot, and with practice, I was able to hold and maintain uh, the more balanced seat. But uh, even just from the day before, when I did this for about five minutes, I can tell my balance is slightly better. And it only will only get better if you do these exercises and at least try. Um, and I will tell you that I am very sore from doing these. And it's not just the riding, it's the stretching and um, getting the hip flexors to be flexible enough to do this. When you put your leg back down, one thing that you can do to double check if your leg's in the correct position is you should be able to look down and see the back of your boot. Uh, like see your heel. Um, if you can't see your heel, meaning like your leg is too far forward, um, then you know you need to work at bringing your leg back. So you can see I'm able to hold my legs up a little bit more this time and keep that balance. Definitely better than earlier. Um, trying to stay balanced right in the middle. It's, it's pretty tricky to do. Um, which is why I recommend starting at the walk when you do some of these things and and why it's so beneficial to do it. So one of the things I want to show you is I'm trying to lift my chest up. <laughs> Jackson's doing his big trot here. Um, and I'm trying to not hollow my back too much. So one thing, uh, Jackson thought I was asking for the canter. Um, I'm trying to not hollow my back. One way you can check is if you put your 
your hand on your small of your back or your lower back and try to see um, that you're not hauling to kind of fill your back. Um, like if you were to blow out a candle, you know, take a breath and, and you kind of contract your diaphragm and allow your back to round itself just a little bit rather than hollow. It gives you a stronger core position. And then um, I'm not comfortable enough to try those exercises at the canter um, with Jackson yet, but I am riding without stirrups at the canter um, and trying to maintain my balance doing that. Um, I'm not sure what I'm talking about here. Um, so again, if you can have someone lunge, it's good. We're going to go the other direction. I think do a little bit more trotting and a little bit more cantering just to make sure we keep it even for Jackson. Um, and I also want to keep these sessions short because he's as out of shape as I am, maybe more so. So there's the trot. Notice how um, my leg is underneath me, my lower leg. Um, there we go. Cantering. One way I tell you people is to put one arm above your head facing forward, palm facing forward, and it'll help you make sure you're in the correct position for a can of transition. To make sure that you're sitting up and uh, not falling in too much. And Jackson's stopping off of my um, body language and verbal cues, mostly body language um, and seat um, for these, and he's doing a really good job. Uh, already doing better than he did yesterday when we did just a few minutes. He's much more consistent. So this is a lot of work to be able to get a horse to do this, to be able to practice this. But even just in a few sessions, you'll you'll notice a difference. You'll have more balance. And the more you stay in the saddle, the safer you'll be, usually. Um, just to have that confidence to know you can stay there. Don't mind my dog. He and Jackson kind of play. Just have to make sure that Jackson doesn't get too rambunctious. All right, so almost done here. Going to do just a little bit more. So this session is, ends up being about 10 minutes long, um, which is probably a good length for early on. Uh, as you get stronger and your horse gets stronger, I think it would be good to be able to do longer. Ask him to keep going and not get too bucking because the dog is right there. Um, Jackson's canter isn't a super, tripped a little there, isn't a super, um, smooth canter, but it also isn't a really big one, so that doesn't provide as much practice, um, but probably in a few sessions, I want to try doing the same exercises at the canter, but I will probably be holding on to the saddle. Now, one of the things is a lot of people think when you ride, you need to grip the horse with your thighs or your calves, but that's actually not going to be as helpful as you might think, except for um, in brief situations. To hold yourself on, a lot of times if you squeeze your thighs, it'll actually push you up out of the saddle. And anytime you have that tension, the horse will feel it and might make him more tense. So the more relaxed and balanced you are, the, the better off you'll be and the horse will be because then you'll be able to keep your muscles nice and loose for riding. And honestly, if you do this, um, if you are riding your horse uh, just normally without stirrups, if you learn to ride without stirrups and be balanced, it's amazing how comfortable it feels. <laughs> that may sound weird, but um, I can hop on a horse and ride without stirrups if I've been doing this a little bit, and I feel super comfortable and confident in the saddle. Uh, just because of the practice, I know I can maintain that balance. Um, and if I need to, I can always grab a hold. And then Jackson's showing you that he still wants to um, eat the grass. Anyway, that's about it. Um, and what I want uh, people to see is that I'm not hauling my back. Don't do that. Fill your lower back in. Lift your chest and be relaxed. Make sure you move your shoulders so that you're not too tight. Um, and make sure when you look down, when you look down, you see um, that 
the seam on your pants is almost vertical and that when you look you can see the heel if your lower leg is forward um, you won't be able to see your heel when you look down it should look something like this so please try these let me know if you have any questions let me know if this helps you uh, next month I will be doing a video that shows how I started with my riding which was very very bad and then where I'm at now, which is not perfect, but it's a big improvement, especially since I did it by myself and it's raining. So I'm picking up the camera now. You got this. Have fun riding. Enjoy the spring weather, which is very mercurial right now. Um, stop raining. Okay, anyway, I would love to hear any other videos you'd be interested in watching. I have a lot of ideas for this uh, summer that I'm hoping to do and good luck.